When you're building a website, understanding the journey that a website visitor experiences when they come to your site the first time can make a big difference. And today's website review is an example of just that. Hello, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes and we're doing another website review sent in by one of our users today. We're looking at a website and actually the first point here comes right up because if I look at the website as you see it right here, then I would say the website is called Two Palms Retreat. However, if you actually want to find this website, you have to go to littleriverinsc.com. That's the first detail I want to mention here and that's something that has shown up on previous website reviews as well. Make sure that your brand name and your website name is in line with your domain name. And in this case, I can imagine that twopalmsretreat.com is probably taken. And I would say it's better to either change the website name to, the, to what the domain name is or to find a non.com domain that is in line with the brand name. So that's the first thing. But having said that, let's take a look at this website. So right here, we can see Welcome to Two Palms Retreat. We have a large image that gives us an idea of where this is. And also we have a clear idea fairly quickly of what this is about. So that's good, right? We can see an image, it says, welcome to Two Palms Retreat. It's pretty clear what this is about. And then the rest of the homepage is uh, different blocks of text that explain, let's say some of the main features of this place. And then we have some extra links. For example, we have photos so we have interior and exterior photos we can, we can look at. Here is an example of that. And we have a whole page which is a gallery. So we can also take a closer look at this, which is good. Um, so we have some, some larger versions of these images. That's always good. And those are the, the same for exterior. And then we have amenities and some other links. Here again, we have something like a feature overview, let's say, just made out of these boxes and bullet points, which granted is better than having a single list of just bullet points, uh, having something like this broken down into, into sub sections, let's say, makes it easier to find something specific. But still, if we're actually looking at that, this is just a whole lot of text and a huge list of things. It's quite difficult to, to actually, you know, I doubt that anyone actually reads all of this. And even if you do read all of it, it's hard to get anything out of this because it's just a list of bullet points. And in fact, this is the main thing that I believe can be improved here. So like I said, the, the key point here to me is to understand the visitor's journey. So someone comes to your website, they've never been there before, they don't know what your business is about and trying to understand what the journey is like for that person and, and how well that is in line with their expectations and what they want to get. Let's jump back to the homepage for this. And so right here, you can see on the homepage, I'm offered only one picture and the picture is not of the retreat itself. The picture is of something that I assume is close to the retreat, close to the place I'd be staying. And then really all I'm offered is a whole lot of text to read through. And so now think of it, in terms of the visitor journey, of course, I can come here and start reading and I can start reading about where this place is and I can read about why it's a great location. And there are some, you know, some good points mentioning, for example, that, hey, there's a real kitchen in this place. That's a good thing to mention. That's, that's gonna make a difference to some people. Uh, also mentioning that you have uh, really good Wi-Fi and you have Netflix accounts available and so on. That, again, that's a, that's a really good selling point. I think it's great that this is on the page, but you're expecting someone to read through all of this text and basically form their own picture. So instead, think of how can you make this visitor journey as pleasant and as visual as possible. So you wanna make it as easy as possible for someone to picture themselves being there and enjoying this retreat. This is a general principle in any kind of marketing. If you can get your prospect to imagine themselves using your product or imagine themselves achieving that end result that you promise with your product, that will make a huge difference. And just asking someone to read a lot of text or just asking someone to look through essentially a feature list and kind of figure out for themselves what that's going to be like 
makes it very, very difficult. You're leaving a lot of the work up to your visitor. So instead, what I would try to do here is basically take pretty much this content and find ways to add visual elements and to add proof. Because it's one thing to tell me, you know, let's say it has a great kitchen. It's another thing to show me, show me a picture of the kitchen, show me a picture along with the text, right? Tell me in the text why this is good, but show me a picture of how great this kitchen is. And the same with uh, Wi-Fi. If you um, promise great connectivity, talk about that, tell me about it, but add a screenshot, you know, a speed test screenshot where I can see how fast this connection is that adds proof. And also if I'm just skimming through the page, if I see that screenshot showing, you know, whatever, 50 megabits a second or something, and I'm someone to whom internet speed is really important, that will stop me in my tracks. And immediately I will go, oh, wow, this is something I'm interested in. And then I will maybe read that part of the page. And so similarly for, for basically everything you do, right? When you talk about the bedrooms, show me a picture of the bedroom. Don't make me go to a different page to find the photos and then find the photos of that bedroom. When you talk about how great the bedroom is, show me a picture of how great the bedroom is. That is the biggest main thing I would change here. And another thing, so there are a few more details, more small details, but really, again, if you want to think about what's the visitor's journey and how can I make that as attractive as possible, that's the main change I would make here. There are some small details. Let's just run through those. So if we go back to the photos here, quite simply, it would pay to take more flattering pictures of this place. So if you just look at it, you know, in terms of the lighting, in terms of the composition and so on, these pictures are okay, but they look like they were just made with a simple handheld and investing a bit of time into, you know, getting the best possible light and really making the nicest possible pictures of this place can make a huge difference. If you go and have a look at, you know, pictures of, of large hotel chains, the way they depict their images, even if the images are a bit crappy, or even if the rooms actually are a bit crappy, they'll always have gorgeous pictures that make it look actually better than it really is. And this is the opposite. I bet this place actually looks nicer in real life than on the pictures. So that would be something really worth investing in. Because people are very visual, right? So this is going to make a difference. Then if we go to the free inquiry page, which is the booking page, um, here I also noticed, well, this looks a bit messy, but I'm guessing that's just down to the app or the plugin that's being used here for this calendar. Uh, you know, if this isn't customizable, I guess that's not a deal breaker. But if you can make this look a bit nicer and make it look like it fits into this page better, that wouldn't harm either, you know, that wouldn't hurt either. Another thing is, you know, we, here we have uh, sharing buttons on the side. Doesn't really make sense. Nobody's going to share the booking page. So this is just a distraction, especially, you know, these were made to, to kind of catch attention because they appear once you scroll, they move down as you scroll. So they take some attention away from the rest of the page, which here really you don't want to have that happen. And then the final detail that I noticed here is, you know, we have terms and conditions and that as a main navigation link, I think that shouldn't be up there. Terms and conditions is definitely a link that should be down in the footer. You've got to have it on your site for sure, uh, but I wouldn't place that in the main navigation. It's just not a primary page that people need to visit. All right, so those are some ideas based on this website. And I hope you can take these same principles and these same ideas and apply them to your own site and come up with your own ways to improve the visitor's experience and the visitor's journey through your site. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes and I'll see you in the next video.